All right, so today we're gonna to be checking out probably the perfect mini PC for your home lab. So let's get started. Now this mini PC is called the MS-01 from Miniforms. And I do wanna thank them for sending this over to me for review. And everything we talk about will be linked down in the description below. Now, to begin, this just looks like an ordinary mini PC like you would find maybe five or 10 years ago. But that's where the similarities end. What Miniforms just did is probably put the perfect combination of PCIe ports and connections into a mini PC that we all need for our home labs. Now to start with, taking a look at the front and you can see that there is a power button, a headphone jack, and three USB ports up in front. Again, it looks very inconspicuous, but trust me, it's packing a lot. Off to the side a little, they do have their little logo, so it's not branded too much. The only thing you're gonna see on mini forms is that little thing on the side. Now going to the back, you're gonna see two 10 gigabit SFP plus ports. And next to that, you have two 2.5 gigabit RJ45 ports which is tons of networking for this guy. In the middle, you have two USB 4s that supports Thunderbolt, HDMI, and then two more USB ports. And then the barrel connector for the power, which is 19 volts. But up on top, you can see this little port over here, which allows you to install PCIe interfaces to this mini PC, which is not something we ordinarily get on mini PCs in itself. So having this option opens the door for so many different types of hardware that we could put in here. Now, with that being said, there's this little button that you could press, and then the whole computer just slides out. So it's screwless. You don't have to unscrew anything to replace parts or add parts. It's just sliding it out by pressing this button, which now reveals the top of the mini PC. PC. And the first thing you see is this huge 16 slot PCIe, but don't get confused. It's actually just the 8X, not a 16X, but it is PCIe 5, which has a direct connection to the CPU. So it's not going through any chipset, which is also a good and bad thing. Now, the good thing is you get PCIe 5. The only downside is you are limited to what type of hardware you're allowed to put in there. For example, something like this NVMe that I have actually won't work through this connector because it actually doesn't have a controller on there to allow it to switch between the NVMe slots. So the CPU won't even know what to do with that. So certain things like this would have issues running off this PCIe slot, but this network card that I have, which is a 2.5 gigabit four port, that works perfectly fine. This graphic card that I have, which is a 1030, works perfectly fine. Your mileage may vary on the hardware that you're using. Right besides the PCIe, you can see this fan that has three screws holding it down. Now, if you take that apart, underneath that, that's where you expose your DDR5, so if you need to upgrade your RAM. Now, according to Miniform's website, you can upgrade this to 64 gigs of RAM, which I currently have 32. But according to Intel's website for this CPU model, you're actually able to go up to 96 gigs of RAM. But with that being said, I'm very impressed on how it comes together, it's very clean. There's a, definitely enough airflow for everything to cool off. And best of all is that PCIe slot. It's something that I've been wanting to get for my home lab setup. So I could actually pass through a graphic card to a Windows machine so I could use Photoshop or Adobe or whatever products I have that requires a graphic card. Now we're not done here yet. Flipping to the underside of this, you can see this big bracket that actually houses a fan. And underneath that bracket exposes three NVMe ports. Now the one closest towards the middle is actually a PCIe 4, and then the other two NVMEs are PCIe 3s. So there is definitely a lot of storage options on this mini PC. Now, this mini PC also includes an adapter that allows you to use U2. So being that U2 is available, you are now able to use enterprise grade drives. Now the difference between a standard SATA SSD and an enterprise drive is right here. You can see the middle notch is actually cut out of the SSDs while the enterprise actually has some pinouts there. If you look at the U.2 adapter, it also has connectors right at that spot, which allows you to use the enterprise drives. Unfortunately, the height of the drive matters because this mini PC is so limited by height I actually wasn't able to fit my enterprise drive in here. It was just slightly off by a couple of millimeters. The SSD fit fine. So if you are planning to go through enterprise drives, you do have to be mindful of the height. And as you can see from the footage, it's just slightly above the case. So I really hope that this case could have been maybe a hair taller than it would have been able to fit most drives. Now talking about the height of all these drives, the middle slot allows you to install a heatsink onto the NVMe, while the other two slots that are PCIe 3 are actually blocked by this really thin fan, which means you really can't use a heatsink on these NVMe's. But again, being that it's PCIe 3 versus PCIe 4, the heat generated from these is probably not too outrageous compared to the four. But I do like the fact that the top and the bottom of this mini PC is actively cooled. Now going towards all the way at the end, you do see your little Wi-Fi adapter. So yes, this thing does have Wi-Fi. Now this mini PC actually comes in three different variants, which is the i9-13900H, 
the I912900H, and then the I512450H. Now, the version that I have is the 13th gen, which is the I913900H, which has a base clock of 2.6, turbo boost up to 5.4, it has 14 cores, which is six performance cores and eight efficiency cores and 20 threads. Now it does come pre-shipped with Windows, so I was able to run Cinebench R20, and the multi-thread score was 6926, while the single thread score was 667. And this is all clocking in at 45 watts. Now, as far as the GPU goes, it does come with an Iris X clocked at 1.5 gigahertz. So if you're planning to build this as a mini PC for Plex or Jellyfin or something like that, you do have the Intel Iris XE so you could actually transcode those videos, which is a huge bonus. Like there's so much you could do with this. It's, it's insane. My plans on this mini PC is to rebuild it from scratch again and start doing pass throughs and stuff. So I'm going to be making videos on passing through graphic cards or certain types of hardware. So we're going to have a lot of fun with this. Now, one of the biggest features I didn't even talk about yet is the fact that the two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet ports are actually on a management interface, which has Intel V Pro on there which also means it has something similar to IPMI, which allows you to actually control the PC, like if you were sitting in front of it, like through the BIOS or boot up and everything, through the network port. This is similar to what I would use on my Pi KVM, which allows me to remotely access certain computers. This has its own interface for it. I don't know how many, many PCs or if any has this feature. All in all, I think this is the perfect mini PC for your home lab, especially if you're starting off and you need pass through, you need hardware. This has everything that you need. It has enough horsepower to run a lot of VM. It's running off DDR5, so it's, the memory's very fast. It's got four network connections, so it's got 10 gigabits and 2.5 with management interface. A PCIe port, I mean, there's nothing else that I really need in this mini PC to make it any better. So anyway, you will be seeing this mini PC on this channel more often. I'm gonna be doing more projects with it, but if you have any questions about it, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is gonna be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, Hack till it hurts.